So it can be stressful for any mother when their children are totally losing it and having melting those, down. Yes, having chucking a tantrum, whatever you want to call it. And often in that panic, that like are too much, either too much for me or I'm worried about them. We want to fix it. We want to stop it. We want to make it go away. We want to do something to stop whatever is going on and kind of make it better to fix the situation. And often that is not what your child's needing and it's not what will actually, in a sustainable way, fix the situation. Mm. So what we're talking about in this video is the act of truly listening as a healing practice and we call that holding space. So the practice of holding space is more than just your conventional listening that you do while you're cooking dinner or while you're multitasking. This is not the same. This is about listening on um, all levels. So not just with your ears, but feeling for what's going on, reading the energy underneath. And it's fairly involved practice, but the main pieces of it is what we're going to give you today in the video. And it's specifically the pieces that you need to implement in the middle of a meltdown with your child. So before we go into the practice, I just want to share um, the reason why holding space is so effective while your child is having a meltdown. And that's because most of the time, the core need is to really be heard and seen and received in whatever's going on for them. It's not about fixing the thing that they might be screaming about. It's about being heard in what's moving for them. That is most of the time all they're really needing. So we need to meet that need before we meet any other need and that's where holding space comes in. And if you don't meet that need, you'll find that you'll be constantly all across the day fixing a running stream of meltdowns and tantrums and they'll get more and more crazy like things that you couldn't possibly fix like it's not okay that the sky is blue like <laughs> you can't change that you know so it will keep moving along until you actually meet this need so the piece to, in today's video that we want to talk about and that we can give you a practice around is setting the container. So one of the pieces around holding space is that you set a very intentional container for all of this to be held. And there's a few pieces that go into that and we're going to give them to you now. So the first one is that you want to be conscious and clear about what your intention for the moment is. And when you're holding space, your intention is not to fix things, okay? Your intention is to truly hear them, to receive them. It's a gift of healing. It's to hold that space of love for them. It's almost, it's like, you imagine like cradling. Like, I can be here, I can hold this while you feel whatever you need to feel. It's creating the safe container for them. Absolutely. So connect to your intention for the moment. And the next piece that you want to do is you want to check in with yourself. Am I willing and am I able? Okay, because you can only hold space for as long as you're capable of holding space for and you need to check in and make sure that you have the reserves to go there. And if for example you're feeling really hurt by something they've said or that the words that they're using are really triggering and then maybe it's not the best time to do it. But if it's if you're in that space where you can kind of see that this isn't about all the things that they're saying and really they're just needing to express themselves and they're needing someone to hold the space for them, that's when you're ready and you can do it. Okay, so the last piece for setting the container is creating a safe environment. Um, for holding space to happen, it has to be a space of safety. And there are three ways that we do this. So the first way is with our body language. So if you're feeling really tense or you're feeling really defensive, that will translate into the situation. So make sure that your body is in a place where you feel open, where you feel relaxed, where you feel calm. Okay, so check your body language. The second piece is to open up your energy. And what we mean by that is to really feel yourself being very wide open, almost like you're energetically hugging or embracing. So you want that space to feel really, I'm open to you, I value you, I hear you, and I'm here for you. That very open energy. 
So it's an open heart is another way to look at it. Yeah. And then the third piece is two parts in this is presence and focus. So the difference between the two. The first piece is presence. You want to be present to this moment. You don't want to be thinking about the last time they had a tantrum and what worked or the next time or the shopping list or how tonight will go or anything else. You just want to be present to this moment. And the second part of this is focus. And focus is where are you putting your attention and you want your attention to all be focused, your full focus on your child. So you can actually start practicing getting familiar with setting this container by working it into all your interactions with your children. Just start setting containers to hold space for people that come to you, be it your children or your partner. Set that container, open your energy, have your presence and your focus in the right place, check your body language, drop out of needing to answer or reply or formulate a response and just be have your intention set to receive and to hear. It doesn't have to be when they're having a tantrum. It's great to practice this in other moments. Mm. So you can access it more easily when you need it, which is when they're having the meltdown. So when your child is in that meltdown and they're fully expressing themselves, the practice that we're suggesting to you is to drop into this space, to hold space, to, to tell yourself, I can hold this. And with your energy, let them know, I can hold this. And it's important in this practice to remember I'm, there's nothing for me to fix. All my intention is right now is to hold space for them, to hold that loving, healing, open space, to fully receive them. You don't need to say anything. It's actually best in this practice not to say anything, especially at first. And just fully be with their tantrum the whole way through mm. and see what happens. And if you're finding that a little challenging, remember to breathe because mm. your breath will allow your body to relax and allow you to have something to just keep you rhythmically anchored. So for some of you, this practice might feel challenging, especially if you're driven by the need to fix things all the time. And possibly the first time that you do this practice, it might feel rather intense because your children will feel that they're being heard and they'll let a lot of stuff out. But if you can sit with this practice, if you can embrace this practice, your children will feel so heard by you. It will be incredibly connecting for your relationship. Your bonds will be so much stronger. And over time, you'll find that the meltdowns and the tantrums will actually typically shorten in length, unless there's a lot going on for your child, but they tend to be shorter because your child feels more heard by you. So give it a go and hold space, it, both in those moments of tantrum, like just resist that urge to fix it and to say stuff. Actually, one thing you could say to yourself is, I don't have to do anything here, I just need to be. And then also, in all the, as soon as this video finishes, when you interact with the next person in your family, just make it that practice to hold space. Stop. Enjoy those tantrums, I tell you. <laughs> okay. Chip check. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Definitely have chips because I think I do chips. <laughs> They're all hidden underneath. <laughs> My words just keep what? I hear ya. Good luck. <laughs> Good, luck. Well, Good luck with that. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, what? Just settle me quicker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, I get you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I could keep going, but I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs>